Platform design talks about platform business models. And platform business models, they don't own the means of production. They create the means of connection, right? These businesses create value by facilitating the exchange of value. And in platform design, it's about saying, hey, what are small little hacks, manual hacks? How can I give a small team uh, very little time and very little money to go and try to launch a platform business in two weeks? How could you use off-the-shelf tools? How could you go and drive traffic to landing pages to go talk to consumers, talk to producers and see, hey, can I do a core transaction? Can I go end to end using a bunch of SaaS tools or you know, different pre-existing things? I'm not writing any code. I'm doing a bunch of unscalable manual hacks. I'm making phone calls. I'm doing a bunch of manual activities that don't scale. That's the whole point. But what you're testing is what is the level of expectation in the consumer or the producer? Because if I can have a arguably very bad experience, anything you're standing up in two weeks is not going to be a slick experience, okay? But the point is you're testing what is the expectation of both the consumer and producer? Because if you can do a handful of core transactions in a month, that's actually pretty amazing. And what that means is, hey, what if I was to invest a lot more money into technology, into the brand, into marketing, into ops? And I was to actually try and build a real business around this. Okay, maybe there's something there. Because if the consumer and producer expectation is willing to deal with me in a very slow, clunky, not streamlined process and experience, okay, if I invest more into this, I should be able to scale that. That's a very simple, dumbed down version of how you can kind of think about doing these manual hacks and what you're trying to test. You're also gonna learn a lot about the market. Who are the potential consumers and producers? You can test a bunch of different core transactions. What are the KPIs? What, you know, what's my LTV? What's my CAC? Lifetime value, cost of customer acquisition. You really wanna try and have at least a three to one uh, ratio between those two things if you're gonna have a viable business. You're not gonna get that in the hacks, but you're gonna start to understand what that CAC is initially. It's gonna be probably hard for you to calculate a good LTV, but you can start to kind of see roughly what the CAC is. Now you can take this market data and you can now pair that up with your other market research, competitive landscape. You can do some qualitative, quantitative consumer producer surveys. And then the other part of this is to go talk to the rest of the tech startups and potential partners who are the incumbents who are the, say, large traditional uh, uh, enterprises that you could partner with. And now, when Applico does platform design, we're doing this on behalf of a large traditional enterprise. And what we're looking at is to take this real live market data from the hacks, to take the data from talking to all of the heads of the tech startups, potential entities that you could partner with, or do JVs with, and then analyze, here are the assets from the traditional business. What kind of demand could I tap into? What kind of digital demand do they have? What kind of analog demand do they have? What kind of supply or pricing or data do they have that I could use to uh, benefit my algorithms or um, you know, core transaction? Uh, what kind of value-added services do they have that I could layer in on top of my platform business? What kind of brand value do they have with consumers and producers? What's their balance sheet like? And you can start to then use that to say, okay, what does my business model look like? We think here's the best platform opportunity. Here are the advantages and the assets from the core business. And ultimately what you're trying to say is, how can I capture this platform opportunity? And along that level of that train of thought and that analysis, what you need to think about is, what am I gonna build from scratch? There's always gonna be something to build. Is it a build and buy? Is it a build and partner? Is it a create a JV and buy? Is it a, um, you know, I'm going to go make a strategic investment in what I think is going to become the dominant platform. And then I'm going to layer in my, my in intrinsic assets on top of that thing. And you got to build some stuff to expose those assets. It could be a whole range of build, buy, partner, and invest. But what is the best way to navigate that landscape? Could be multiple of those options to arrive at that platform opportunity. And, you know, there's multiple levers to this, right? You could say you have, if you're going to only build, 
you got a longer timeline, higher risk, but if successful, lower potential overall cost, maybe. If you're going to build and buy, you're never going to just usually buy on your own. Usually you want to try and you got to build to expose your intrinsic assets and layer them into the acquired entity. Um, but if you're going to build and buy, you know, what are the gaps that I have from a technology standpoint? Uh, whatever I'm buying, am I getting demand, supply, or both? You're also getting an existing team. You're getting a team that understands the industry, that is passionate about the industry. And that saves you a lot of time. You know, you, you need a team to go run this new platform entity of yours. Okay, what's that worth? Um, so how am I, how are you and weighing all of these different variables to figure out the best path? What does the board want in terms of a timeline for break even? Very hard to project that out if you go entirely build from scratch. A little bit easier and to do that and with a higher degree of confidence if you're looking at some mixture of build by partner invest, right? Um, so how do you do that? And, you know, that's all a part of platform design is to build that business case to figure out here's the best starting point and here's the path to arrive at some point of critical mass, some point of break even. We now have a platform entity that either I own outright and is now on its way to being that dominant platform in my space or I own a significant share of what is going to become the dominant platform. And that's what platform design is going to get you. It's now going to set you up to now if you're a large traditional enterprise to take those findings, to discuss them internally, to discuss them amongst the executive team, to discuss them with the board, to uh, make a decision about A, do you want to go forward or not? And then B, if you do want to go forward, what paths make the most sense to go down, right? Build, buy, partner, invest. Which of these, one or multiple, make the most sense to explore? And then you're going to start to engage in conversations. If it's a build and buy, if, it, if it's anything but just build entirely build from scratch, if it's anything but, now you're going to engage in conversations with these other third parties. Those other third parties could, again, be different tech companies. They could be platform entities that you're looking at buying or investing in or partnering with. They could be linear tech companies. Maybe there isn't a good platform in the market, but maybe there are linear tech companies it helps solve for demand or supply that maybe you want to turn them into a platform or maybe you have the demand and you don't have the supply and you can buy a linear tech company on the supply side and help accelerate your ability to open up and capture supply. Whole range of options on this. But now you need to engage in those conversations, get your strategic or corp dev department or whoever it is involved in that and start talking to the different tech players the different potential partners or people that you could create a JV with, that's joint venture. Um, you know, maybe you want to try and hedge this a little bit, maybe, or maybe you have some intrinsic assets, but maybe someone else has really good complementary assets. You already have a relationship with them. If the two of you partnered up and created a JV and then say acquired one of these tech companies, okay, you know, now we've got a very high degree of confidence that this thing's going to be a win. Lots of options in that space. Net, net, what you're trying to accomplish in platform design, you run that whole time horizon out, is in three months, you're on the ground doing the work in platform design. Over the course of a two to three year period of time, assuming there's a, a build and buy partner or invest options on the table, how do I have platform business that I own outright or that I own a significant chunk of that will achieve a strong point of critical mass where it has the high likelihood of being the top one or two uh, players in a winner-take-all platform environment with a path to profitability. Maybe it is not break-even in two to three years, but I have a high degree of confidence that I understand where the break-even point is, and me as an executive team and my board can be comfortable with investing in this and going down that path. That is the vision, a two to three year timeline to now have spun out or have a separate platform entity which is set up to win on a timeline and a level of investment that the traditional business is comfortable engaging in. That's three months on the groundwork to get to that point. That's platform design. Hi, this is Alex from Winner Take All. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave a comment, ask us questions, and definitely make sure to join us on our next live stream.